everyone, I'm Nebula on behalf of the Gondola dev team to present and talk about the changes in the coming 2.5 update. We'll start with the general system changes and move on to visual changes and then the class specific changes after. We hope you enjoy it. Now, let's begin with... General changes. Gondola currently runs on a version of Core CBM that is several years outdated, meaning we've missed out on many optimizations and updates. Along with this, we've still been relying on the framework of a WAD that the creators no longer wish to be used, so we're aiming to shed that as well. This will help us moving forward as it'll make updating in the future easier. The HP decimal system Gondola has decided to adopt is a hybrid of the traditional 100 HP base and CBM's x10 HP values. This way, we can adjust damage numbers more finely while players can still maintain proper and easy callouts. And now, a rapid fire of all the cosmetic changes in Now, on to the meat and bones of this update, the rebalancing. Despite being the titular character, Mega Man as of late has fallen out of viable comps in Gondola Patch, with one of the major issues stemming from the fact that his high damage tools take too long to get and are too loud. By increasing the damage on the first tier of his fully charged buster, we hope that it will alleviate some of those issues. Shockwave Slam's step height was reported for not being able to make it up steps players can walk up. By adjusting the step height, we solved this issue. Brock has been a class that's always been a very unstable position. In the past, he had really strong tools that went unchecked due to the low amount of people playing him. But once reductions to those tools were added, even fewer people picked him up and have noted many flaws with him. As such, it was easier to start from CBM Rock as a base. We initially added the Power Protect to his kit to ensure that you couldn't stack several Mega Balls on top of each other and deal crippling amounts of damage very quickly. Once people started picking up the class again, however, it was discovered that the power protection applied was far too strong, so we've lessened the strength of it to get ball stacking some of its original value. Roll is widely considered to be the worst class in the game, and with good reason. She lacks tools for many situations, but one of her strongest areas is her dashes, which she gets many of and can use them quickly. However, she had to use too many of them to get in and often lacked the needed mobility to escape after an engagement, as using Broom completely halted dash ammo gain. By allowing her to gain meter by hitting enemies, we hope to give her more specialized tools to perform better overall. The changes made to Sniper Joe are a continuation of nerfs to snowballing classes in previous, such as the one to Rothor in 2.4.1 or BBA Mega Man in 2.4. His mix of being rewarded for taking his time, along with having some incredibly strong anti-rush tools and rush tools himself, make him a force to be reckoned with that players don't have fun fighting. We've seen to reworking a large chunk of his kit to see that while he still has access to his strong tools, 
he has to choose which ones to use instead of simply getting them all. Starting with Joe's standout option, the summoning of his vehicle box. In order to accommodate some of the changes made later, we increase the max ammo from 420 to 700. This increases the base duration of the vehicles from 12 to 20 seconds. Along with this, we buff the idle ammo gain and scoreball ammo to compensate for the larger ammo pool. While the requirement to fill up the box isn't the same, we've upped the ammo consumption on the summon itself from 315 to 700, as to prevent Joe from summoning his crate and then instantly filling up his machine gun. Moving to his machine gun, we've moved the reload to item. This is simply to make it so that he can still reload his machine gun while at full crate ammo. Now for the most apparent change, Joe has received a major overhaul to the way his vehicles work. Previously, it lasted 12 seconds no matter how much activity you used, allowing Joe players to hunt down and chase nearly any target they pleased. Now, while the idle time on the vehicles has increased, Joe's vehicles must use ammo to deal damage. Joe's truck consumes 1 ammo per tick. As for Apache, the main fire consumes 15 ammo per shot, while the alt fire consumes 35. Lastly, we decided to remove the 25% bonus speed Joe got while in the Apache. This speed boost allowed Joe to apply too much pressure, along with outright being inescapable for most classes. Combine this with the rapid shifting in height at a top level, and Apache was also extremely difficult to hit, not allowing enemy players to take advantage of his reduced armor as compared to truck. Alongside this, we removed the ammo gain on entering a vehicle. We've made a minor adjustment to the way Ice Slasher works. Instead of starting off at a base 30 speed, we've adjusted it to start at a base speed of 15. In return, it spends the first 12 ticks at its slow base speed, then rapidly speeds up over another 12 ticks to hit a max speed of 36. While it doesn't seem like much of a big change on the surface, this allows Iceman to instantly detonate his lances, giving him a rather powerful mix-up at close range. In an attempt to make Gutsman's M2 better compensate for lag, we changed it from an explosion to hit scan. However, this had the unintended effect of making his M2 very useful for aggression, as it actually had a longer range than normal. This led to Gutsman becoming an extremely powerful class, as his high health pool combined with rock and punch made him incredibly difficult to deal with. Alongside this, the hit scan also compensated for players with high ping, which led to punch having an incredibly easy time corner checking, and in some cases, intense disjoints we've made the decision to revert Punch back to its 2.0H incarnation. Metal Man was a class that, while extremely frail, could output an immense amount of damage if left unchecked. However, recent HP buffs have left Metal Man in a state where he deals too much damage for the amount of survivability he has. As such, we've taken steps to lower his overall damage output slightly in order to bring him more in line with the rest of the cast. Quickman has gotten a mire of complaints, as his extremely high speed compared to the rest of the cast makes him very frustrating to fight in last man standing scenarios. Along with this, when he activated his speed boost, he would jump to a staggering 2.0 speed, almost doubling the next fastest character. By toning his base speed down, we've also toned down his speed boost, and hopefully made it so that he's easier to catch, while still being the fastest class in terms of ground speed. While Flash Stunner is a much better alternative to Time Stopper, in its current state the windup is just a little too quick leading to Flash players being able to fire off multiple stunning shots in quick succession. By reverting the windup to its original version, alongside reducing the explosion radius, we hope to make Flash think more about when he should be using his tools. Magnet Man's Magnet Mines were a controversial attack, as it allowed a class who traditionally faltered to rush down an option to build large amounts of space between him and an enemy. Homing high damage mines that block shots simply gave him too much ability to shut down an attempt on rushing. As such, we removed them entirely, as to give players more of a chance to get in on Magnet. Doc Robot, after having his new rework released, has been going through some rather intensive battle considerations while players figure out what works and what doesn't. Lately, players have been beginning to depend on Gear Grinder far more than any of his other tools, as its much stronger stats make it the most effective option. With the nerfing of Gear Grinder, his HP has been adjusted to compensate. The initial HP nerf from 190 was made when Doc Robot had his older CQC tools, which made him extremely strong. With the nerfing and tweaking of his current tools, it stands to see that we can restore his old HP value, allowing him to last a little bit longer. Gear Grinder has been seeing a lot of use from Doc Robot players, as its extremely strong stats allow it to cover a variety of situations. With these changes, we hope to bring it more in line with Doc Robot's other tools. Gravity Man has been one of the most notorious late game classes, with an extremely strong buster and one of the best chip tools in the game with Gravity Sphere. By lowering the power of these tools, we hope to allow players to get more opportunities to fight Gravity Man, bringing him more in line with the rest of the metagame. Gravity Man's buster has always been extremely strong, with a fast speed and high fire rate. 
By bringing it more in line with the more standard busters, we hope to encourage Gravity Man to play at a closer range, allowing him to be punished more. This change was in an earlier patch, but was removed. We believe that we made a mistake in removing it, and are thus bringing it back. Giving Gravity Sphere damage, no matter the actual damage or hitbox size, simply makes Gravity Man extremely oppressive in the late game, as he's able to throw out sphere after sphere without care or regard as to where his opponent is. This also affects Gravity Man's Flip Dem 2. Charge Man had an extremely powerful rushdown game before his latest buff, which gave his M2 full invincibility, alongside giving the M2 its own ammo bar. After the buff, Charge Man was able to shrug off massive damage by simply pressing M2, and while doing this, he also fired projectiles, allowing him to keep up his terrifying pressure. This was deemed much too powerful by a majority of players, and as such, we've opted to give him a 50% damage resistance instead. Darkman 1's Buster hitbox reached far outside of the actual sprite, allowing it to hit players or die on walls seemingly out of nowhere. By adjusting the radius on M1, we hope to make his shots more consistent and reflect his sprites better. After losing out on his hitscan, Darkman 3 has struggled to find a good place in the meta. We hope that by buffing his HP to give him some extra longevity, Darkman 3 players will be able to play more aggressively and assist their team more. Alongside this, we've opted to tweak his Dark Rings a little bit, as to make them more consistent. Darkman 3's scoped rings are notorious for being an extremely powerful projectile that allowed him to stun classes from very long distances. As such, we've made it so that scoped dark rings take one half of the ammo bar instead of one third. However, to compensate, we've made his uncharged scoped main fire take the same speed as the scoped dark ring, at 120. Centaur Man has often been considered a better than average class. However, Recent developments have shown that Centaur Man's ability to lock down an entire corridor by simply holding the primary fire button to be too powerful. As such, we've given Centaur Arrow an ammo limit, and he will now shoot a slower, 10 damage, non-splitting Centaur Buster shot when out of ammo. <laughs> Nightman's rework has been one of the better received reworks in Gondola's history, but that didn't stop it from having a few quirks. Nightcrush's hit stun could stop an opponent in their tracks, allowing Nightman to escape situations and stop foes from escaping far more efficiently than he should. In return, we adjusted the knockback on Spinning Mace so he could still act as a CC presence. Alongside this, it was pointed out to us by a few players that the hitbox of Super Night Crush didn't match the actual sprite itself, which has now been tweaked by adding an explosive hitbox to the side that does not do as much damage or knock the opponent up. Plant Man is often considered the most powerful single target healer in the game. However, he lacks movement and combat options, leaving him a sitting duck if he's caught out in the open. Unfortunately, all of his combat options require Plant Man to put himself in an extremely risky position. We've given him an HP buff and given his buster the ability to bounce off of walls once to try and alleviate this. <laughs> Wind Man has recently been bought up in conversation from time to time as being a subpar class, with players citing his lack of ammo and sustain as many reasons. While we haven't buffed his sustain, we have given him a small ammo buff as a buffer to make failed Windstorm combos less punishing. <laughs> Many players believe that one of the things keeping Shade Man viable is the hyperspeed shade glitch, where players fire a noise crush after landing at a specific time after flight to gain a speed boost. When removing this, we didn't want to remove it outright, so he made the speed boost more integrated into his game plan and actually made it a part of his kit. He only gets it when holding charge shots, however. Along with this, we reduced the actual speed he got with it from a 35% boost to a 20% boost. Coldman has always been a strong class, but one of the issues that surfaced recently is the power of his punish play. Being able to summon walls with massive amounts of health, and punish anyone who dares to approach with an extremely devastating cold field into cold shoulder combo. By lowering the health on his walls, we hope to encourage Coldman players to think more about how and when they engage. Magic Man players often lamented the fact that Magic Card's M2, fake cards, had a very limited and often null use, and essentially existed to fill the space in his kit. Importing Core CBM's M2, Magic Ball, will give Magic Man more useful tools to fight meaningfully from a distance. Concrete Man's Sniper Block often rewarded missing more than it did getting actual directs, as the explosive damage was far higher compared to the direct hit damage. This made Concrete Man extremely powerful against classes with shields. By moving the damage from the explosion to the direct hitbox, we hope to encourage Concrete players to prioritize getting direct hits more often. Plugman has been touted as another class who struggles, as his poor attack data and M2 breaking with line of sight checks have made the class incredibly unfun to play. By allowing him to fire plug ball faster and making it so his M2 no longer breaks on line of sight, we hope to make him more viable. Hornetman has been a class that received incredibly brutal nerfs to his kit upon being reworked last update. 
By reassessing the class's role and position in a team, we further refined and altered parts of his kit to ensure that his gameplay remains dynamic without making his homing gimmick too overbearing. Strengthening the homing on Hornet Chaser when used against enemies who have been slowed down by Honey ensures much more rewarding gameplay for those who manage to tag their opponents with the newly reworked Nectar Hive. To compensate for this spike in homing power, we've lowered the damage ever so slightly to not make Honey tagging too punishing on the opponent's end. One of the biggest culprits in Hornet Man's lack of viability was his alt fire rework, which had the user charge up the Nectar Hive in order for it to gain more speed and stronger slowdown or homing from the bees. While on paper not a terrible idea, its limited charge time and general clunkiness made it lose the positive attributes the tool originally had on defense, while having offensive rewards that were simply too minuscule to make up for what was lost in the rework. As such, we've reverted it to its original state, with a few minor tweaks to still highlight those few offensive bonuses on landing shots. We've increased the projectile speed on Nectar Hive, as to allow it to tag enemies from further distances, as well as reducing the rate of fire by 10 ticks and reducing the honey blob count from 4 to 3, as it was extremely frustrating that Hornet players could flood the area with honey at a moment's notice, and capitalize off of the much stronger homing. We also fixed the bug that would cause honey blobs to apply incorrectly, resulting in allies being affected from stepping into the traps. Fake Man's nerfs left him in an extremely poor position, as he was largely unable to fight up close or at a distance. Along with this, the increase of the FOM buffer made it so that he had to leave a large delay in between his shots. Even after reducing it once already, the common consensus among competitive players is that the force delay is still far too long to make Fake Man worth playing. We've reduced it in hopes that it will allow Fake Man to fight more meaningfully in close quarters. Pumpman has been a character that is notoriously difficult to approach with Buster classes, and his latest changes have made him even more oppressive against Buster classes. We're seeking to alleviate this without hurting Pumpman in the process, so we decided to up the strength of his Buster in return for reverting his shield buffs back to the way they were in 2.0H. With the incoming nerfs to Pumpman's shields, we're looking to make sure he's still an able combat, so we gave a power boost to his Buster. Along with this, we decided to slow down the projectile speed in order to encourage Pumpman to fight at a closer range. Pumpman's bubbles blocked many attacks that they should not have, such as grabs. Giving them the ghost property should alleviate this. Pumpman's shield in recent patches hasn't taken away all of the ammo upon detonating it, leading to Buster classes having an extremely hard time fighting or punishing him, as upon taking the slightest damage, Pumpman can simply detonate his shield, wait for the very brief regen period to be over, and then toss up a full shield again. By reverting his shield back to its 2.0H incarnation, Buster classes can now fight Pumpman much more effectively. Sheepman has often been agreed to be one of the worst classes currently available, due to a lack of good CQC options, being rather one note, and having extremely limited health. We hope that by buffing his health, we can start bringing him in line balance-wise with the rest of the game's classes. Strikeman's semi-powered rebound striker allowed him to collect ammo for his reload and pitcher alt fire extremely quickly. This was a bug and has been patched out. Now, in order to gain ammo, you must hit opponents with an unpowered or semi-powered striker. Solar Man is one of the classes that could use just a little extra nudge to give them a better fighting chance, and buffing his HP is the route we took. In the porting process to CBM, Jupiter got some of his big laser code cleaned up, leading him to accidentally hit more times than intended. Increasing the power protect duration on his laser alleviates this. Saturn, alongside getting many bugs fixed, receives some visual updates and minor balance tweaks. Saturn is slow, and while tanky, doesn't have the means to keep absorbing shots, as draining shots drained his M2 duration, which was very counterintuitive. This is Saturn's most vital change, as it allows him to play his game more effectively. Absorbing shots took ammo from Saturn's already draining M2, meaning he wasn't able to absorb rapid-fire shots as effectively. By removing this quality, Saturn should struggle less against classes with rapid-fire attacks. Along with this, we'd like to reward Saturn more for absorbing projectiles, allowing him to tank further damage. He now gains armor for every projectile absorbed, and gains double armor if the meter is full. Many players complained about Meow sounding extremely irritating, along with the fact that it actually cancels Break Dash skin sprites, allowing Pluto players to obscure the attack by simply pressing item. Both of these have been adjusted accordingly. Along with this, we've nerfed the projectile duration of main fire, shortening Pluto's effective range by a large margin. Many players additionally complained that Pluto rarely had to interact with anyone, as Break Shot had virtually no range limit meaning any Pluto at max speed could just chip opponents out from a distance instead of having to get close to deal any meaningful damage. By restoring the shorter break shot duration, hopefully Pluto will use his blinding speed to interact and deal damage, instead of running away. 
Hyperstorm H was in the front of the Gondola Grand Prix Season 1 meta, with 4 out of 6 teams in the entire season having a member playing Hyperstorm. He's extremely strong for a variety of reasons, chief among them being his ability to corner lock players for an extended period of time, and his trample being extremely over-centralizing. By making this change, Hyperstorm H will reach his max hot or cold ammo quicker, thus weakening the corner locking ability of his M1. And lastly, the changes to trample. Trample's primary problems were the fact that it lasted for far too long, allowing Hyperstorm to chase down targets with ease, as oftentimes classes will have to exhaust all of their mobility options to even get a chance of getting away. We removed the ammo gain on Hyperstorm Trample along with doubling its ammo consumption, in the hopes that it will force Hyperstorm players to think more about where and when to trample, instead of Trample being a catch-22 that could be used for every situation. Alongside this, we've lowered the damage slightly, hoping that this will also encourage Hyperstorm H players to explore the other options in his kit. Now, you might be wondering about the update name, the Spring Break Update. It doesn't seem like it has much meaning, but Spring Break is a time of celebration, and so is a new update. We hope you enjoy 2.5 for quite a while, and thank you for- Prepare to die <laughs>
We hope you enjoy and have a fantastic time with this update. This is Nebula, signing out. I like to spike!